Hi and welcome to the New Weave Podcast. My name is Carmen and this is a podcast about knitting and crocheting and other crafty things. Um, you can find me on Ravelry as Caramelletje, on Instagram as Crafty Queens, and I also have a blog, craftyqueens.nl. And as of last week, I have an Etsy shop! Yay! <laughs> I am so happy to announce that the bird boxes, which you can see right here, um, are up for sale. Uh, they are up for sale for $15.99 in euros. Um, and I've managed to get international shipping down to six euros and 65 cents um, because it fits through the mailbox. And originally I didn't think this uh, cheap international shipping was possible since uh, some post offices don't accept these boxes as, um, as letter mail, like if it's in your mailbox so it counts as a letter. Um, but my post office says it was okay. So yeah, so let's uh, try that out. <laughs> um, so you can find me on Etsy as New Leaf Designs NL. Uh, New Leaf Designs was already taken, but um, I just added NL since I'm from the Netherlands. And as it happens, NL is also the abbreviation of New Leaf, so I thought that was really cool. Yeah, makes you think that I actually thought about it, so. <laughs> And I already had my first two sales, so I'm really happy. Um, but Etsy is kind of acting up since uh, those orders were placed a few days ago. And Etsy says the orders are still being processed and that I should not ship them yet. I don't know what is up. And um, I've notified the buyers um, and I just hope I can get those boxes out tomorrow since you know I have listed that um, or I've written that um, there they should allow for about three to five working days for shipping or I mean for before I ship the items and then when Etsy does weird stuff like this it would take longer but um, I'm sure I can figure that out Otherwise, I've been um, I've been doing quite a bit this week. Although uh, my knitting may not um, reflect that, um, I have one knitting finished object. Well, actually two, but one is secret, so I can't show you. <laughs> no, it actually isn't funny because I really like to show you, but I have to wait until winter, <laughs> since uh, it will get published in fall or winter of this year. Um, some other things I have finished are about 10 of these boxes and also a birdhouse which I painted. I felt like a kid again but um, I don't know it's really fun. So I spent some time at my parents house this weekend and my mom um, she had some uh, DIY kits laying around for, um, for these wooden birdhouses and it was kind of like a puzzle you have to I don't know if you can see like the gaps can you see those so that's like where the puzzle pieces fit in and um, it didn't go very smoothly it was you know it was very cheap so I, I don't expect it to be perfect but um, there's a gap here and um, these originally didn't fit very well and then when I came back later my dad said I fixed it so I, <laughs> I imagine him like hammering on it with a hammer to make it fit um, but anyway I painted this and I think it looks cute and I'll be going to a craft fair next Sunday and I'll be displaying my birds next to this birdhouse. I also have a little stick I want to glue on this so they can actually sit on that. But um, yeah. <laughs> actually I used to paint a lot when I was a kid and when I was a teenager so 
it was kind of nice to do that to do that again um, although the paint I had had completely dried out I believe I showed it to you in the intro <laughs> it's like I was pushing out the paint and it would just stick out just I don't know um, yeah so there's that I just moved the boxes from view because I like a cleaner background but. Um, so I figure now is as good as time as any to uh, announce the giveaway winner from two episodes ago uh, which was for a bird box and I just um, I visited the YouTube thread and it said well I hadn't commented on any of the comments um, please don't feel neglected <laughs> I wanted to comment, but um, otherwise YouTube says there are like um, there are 40 comments and if I would um, how do I say this? but if I would comment it would also count my comments so that would kind of uh, mess up the, the random number generator thing because half of the comments would be mine uh, so I did not comment and uh, so there were 40 comments and I used random number generator and that was number 19 which is oh and I'm very happy to announce Kana! <laughs> Kana is one of my testers and she has helped me out a great deal and I am so happy that I can do something back for her and in our comment Karna told me that she was team Betsy so Karna one of these boxes will be going your way so you can make your very own Betsy's <laughs> Karna, I already have your address um, since you're my tester, so um, I will just get this in the post for you. And thank you all so much for participating in the giveaway. It was so much fun to read. And actually, my boyfriend and I, um, we went through the comments tallying the Team Betsy and Team Eugene. And I actually haven't counted the, the very last ones. But um, so I was Team Betsy. Obviously, Betsy is my bae. <laughs> I've never said that. I don't know. Um, and so my boyfriend was Team Eugene. And it was like, one for Betsy, one for Eugene, one for Betsy, one for Eugene. It was totally just, um, yeah, they were very close. It was a neck and neck um, race. And um, I haven't checked the last uh, couple of comments. Um, so I don't know if there's a bird who won, but, um, to me, they're both winners since they're so cute. Um, I made a couple more Eugenes. Here they are. Uh, let me see if I can... This was the original Eugene. Hmm. Yeah, so these were the three new ones. And one of them, I kind of messed up the, uh, color scheme. So, um, let me show you. It usually looks like this with some gray on each side, but then I misread my own directions. And so the gray is a little bit further to the middle. And it kind of reminds me of David Bowie with his lightning bolt across his face. So, um, yeah, this is um, Eugene Bowie. <laughs> And as I've mentioned, I have one FO for this week um, and it's going to be a bit weird to show you since they're still on the blocking board. Um, I didn't think about it. <laughs> I would need to show them in a podcast, so I put them... Uh, I washed them this morning. So I'm just holding them. So here are my rose hip socks. Yeah, this, this won't work. I'll just hold them up. Um, so here's my rose hip socks. <laughs> and um, the rose hip socks are cable socks. There are four cables running down the foot and the leg. 
And in the pattern, uh, the pattern actually uh, says you have to um, do the cables on the back of the leg too, but I kind of, um, when I was at the first sock, I wasn't up until here, and I noticed that oh, I was supposed to do the cable on the back side too, and so I just, eh, I went with it. And then, of course, I had to do that for this for the second sock too. Um, now, previously, I was telling you that I was having some gauge issues, uh, and then in the episode after that, I told you that the gauge was fine, and now I think that it's off. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if I can show you this, but yeah, I probably can. So, this is the first sock. And I want to show you the cables. So as you can see, they are quite narrow. And, you know, it, it looks fine. And then, if I show you the second sock, the cables are much wider. It's like I went up a needle size, but I checked multiple times and I didn't. But it seems... It just seems so wide. And if you look at the heel, the heel is just... Just bad. So this is um, the first heel. Which looks fine. And then... There's the second heel. Which just looks ridiculous. It just looks so big. And I have, again, I have checked stitch count mul multiple times. I have checked if I used the correct needle multiple times. And uh, I just don't know. And um, first I thought it might have to do, well, I hoped it would have to something to do with blocking but then you know the first one which was already blocked was smaller and my experience with blocking is not that it gets smaller <sighs> so i think this is just a size bigger and i don't know what i have done so it seems so you know the only logical explanation left is that my gauge has changed. Which... How do I fix that? I don't have smaller needles, and frankly, I don't want to knit on smaller needles. Since, you know, I find 2.25 millimeters small enough. <laughs> so I just don't know what to do, and um, you know, since I'm gifting these at Christmas, it will be a long while before I figure out if they actually fit or not. And I can get the recipient to fit them beforehand, but, you know, I don't want to, like, give them a little sneak peek and then, oh yeah, I'll just, you just have to wait another, you know, uh, eight months? I don't know. Eight months to Christmas. Or seven months. Mm. Yeah, so... So I just don't know what to do with these socks. I just hope that they will fit the recipient and if not, maybe they will fit someone else or I will just frog them completely. So I did enjoy the pattern though, um, although, and as I said before, uh, for next cabled socks I would choose a cable that you don't need a cable needle for since it was just... Sock knitting is just something that I prefer to be simple and that also means not having to have any other tools than just your knitting needles. And with uh, these socks I needed the cable needle and a stitch marker just to indicate um, on which row I would need to do cabling since, um, you know, I would put the, um, I would put a stitch marker on just some plain stitches next to the cable since on the cable I can't really tell which stitch is the one that 
was on the cable needle since you know they are there are a few stitches with which could be the ones I think I could I think I could actually tell but um, it would be easier to just have the stitch marker there actually a stitch marker on a sock isn't that much of a hassle but the cable needle I would like to get rid of um, and uh, recently I was lucky enough to win uh, a sock pattern um, Louis, yeah, by Louise something, I've forgotten her last name but the, the pattern name is Seed Pots and I believe it's a toe up sock pattern with um, heel flap and gusset so that was really exciting. I actually think the, the rose hip sock pattern also had the heel flap and gusset toe up, but um, <laughs> I think I think I was away when I had to do the heel and I just went with, with, um, with the heel I always do, which is the German short row heel. Um, but with the seed part um, socks, I am determined to do the heel flap and gusset. And I actually think I'm going to make some of those for my boyfriend since um, I think heel flap and gusset would fit him better. Um, I generally, um, well, it's not that I always do that, but for men, um, socks tend to fit better with um, heel flap and gusset. And for women who sometimes have smaller heels, uh, like in proportion to the rest of the foot um, a short row heel would fit better um, but having said that I haven't figured out the heel with a perfect fit for me yet so who am I to tell you <laughs> speaking of socks I have some um, it's part of my contemplating cast-ons um, I'm contemplating to <laughs> cast on some new toe-up socks and write my own formula. Um, and I have also filmed some instruction videos uh, to help you guys along with that if you're curious about sock knitting and just want to try it, but um, maybe you need some more instructions as just a simple written pattern. Um, I found that when I learned how to do sock knitting that most patterns didn't really, um, weren't really specific about how to do the toe, how to do the heel. Um, they, some, some would even say, uh, do your heel of choice. And now that makes complete sense to me. But then it was, it was like, do you expect me to know how to do a heel? <laughs> and um, I didn't know for the life of me how I would do a heel. So um, I don't know how I did that the first time. Maybe I had a friend help me. But anyway. Um, and also there are not many great sock patterns in Dutch. So I wanted to make a kind of toe up sock guide for uh, in English and in Dutch. Uh, with written and uh video instructions for dpns and for circular needles since that is also something that i struggled with uh, i used dpns to start and then i some patterns were just written for circular needles and i was struggling how to make that fit for my dpns so i'm shooting some instruction videos and i'm using this yarn Scheepjes invicta or Invicta Extra actually, uh, there, there's a huge Invicta sock yarn range and Extra is just one of the ranges. It's a solid color um, and it just feels really nice. The actual socks I'll be knitting, um, I'll be choosing these colors for. This will be the toe and the heel and this will be the rest of the sock. Um, but since the green yarn is a little bit hard to to see on camera, I thought this lighter shade would be better for instruction videos. So I used that one. Needle-wise, uh, I figured, you know, 
I started out with DPNs. Uh, lots of beginner suck knitters might be, you know, choosing DPNs to work with. So I pick these Knit Pro Royal. These are 2.25, these are 2.5 millimeter, and um, it's a wooden base with a metal tip. And I'm using the 2.25 for this particular yarn. Um, but having said that, I also have the instruction videos for the circular needles, as I mentioned, um, since there might be some beginners who would just um, get a circular needle although you know those are um, not as easy to get a hold of here in the Netherlands as DBNs at least in my experience <laughs> um, so I'm looking forward to cast that on uh, I will be doing a texture sock pattern uh, actually very simple, but a, with a few purl stitches here and there. Um, that's the one I have in mind. Um, and I think that will give just, just a little more interest to it. And if people want just a simple vanilla sock, which means simple stockinette sock, I'm waving this like an idiot. Uh, if they want that, they can just leave out the purl stitches. So I'm excited to get that started since I have um, completed one knitting FO, well, two, since I have finished two objects, one of which I can show you and one of which I cannot, I figured I might as well treat myself with a new cast on. I think two out, one in, that's a pretty good rule, don't you think? I think so. Um, that does mean I don't get to cast on anything else before I finish two things. So, and not two singular socks, no, one full pair counts as one FO. <laughs> and while we're still on the subject of socks, I would like to ask you uh, what you used when you started sock netting, if you ever knit a sock. Uh, did you use DPNs? Did you use circular needles? Why? Was it easier or did it seem easier? And what are you using now? Is it the same or have you switched to the other method? Or do you like to switch it up? Use DPNs for one pair, use circulars for another pair. What are your thoughts? I would like to hear. I'd like to show you something um, I got in the mail this week. A friend of mine started an Etsy shop. Her name is Barbara and her Etsy shop is called Fiber Fever and I'm pretty sure you can guess what I'm holding in my hands. It's her hand dyed yarn! She sent me this full skein. It's on her Crazy 8 base which is 100% Superwash Merino and this is the mermaid colorway and it is beautiful oh just beautiful I just I find that I'm really a green and blue person at the moment usually just blue but at the moment I'm really enjoying greens as well and this is just perfect just perfect she actually let me pick between her mermaid um, colorway and her peacock colorway and from the picture, Mermaid seemed my absolute faith. But then she also sent a mini skein of the peacock colorway. And just look at this. It is so beautiful. And I actually think that although I like the colors of the mermaid better, that this is much more of a wearable color. I think it would go with pretty much anything. It is so beautiful. It has some orange, some blue, some yellow, some purple or red, red even, I think. But 
also mostly blues and greens. And I just really, really like them. Um, I'll be knitting a pair of socks with this, um, but choosing a, a yarn with nylon for the toes and heels. And um, I can't wait to see how it knits up. I don't think I have seen someone knit up this yarn yet. Barbara herself uh, is working with her Coral Reef colorway and that's also working up stunning. Um, so I haven't actually seen anything made in this yet and I don't think Barbara has seen it either. <laughs> so um, it's really exciting. I might be the first, first to knit with this yarn. But um, let me remind myself that if I cast on the, the toe up socks, which I'm writing a pattern for first, then I have to finish two other things before I get to cast on another one. <laughs> oh man, I'm making it so hard for myself. We'll see. We'll see. At the moment, I'm just spooning over these colors. They're so pretty. So go and check her out, Fiber Fever. Uh, that's her uh, Etsy shop name. I'll also put the link in the description box. So go and check her out. Show her some love. On Instagram, she's also called Fiber Fever. So go and check her out. Another cast on I have been debating for a few weeks. Um, although, of course, I know I will not cast these on before others are finished, but I still wanted to show you. Oh, one of the skeins has become unskeined. Let me just... So I picked up these two skeins of Chestnut Cabin at a craft fair, I think it was in February or March. And they are beautiful. I've shown them on the podcast before. This is the colorway called Cinnamon Chocolate Fudge Brownie. And um, each skein is 120 grams and 480 meters. So I have about, about a thousand yards in total. So 960 meters and 1,050 yards. And I just don't know what I would make with them. I, well, I know that I want to make a kind of cardigan with them that I could wear over a sleeveless shirt. Um, but they, they are thinner than uh, the yarn I would usually pick. It's a very light fingering. Um, I don't think you can really tell. But um, it's a really light fingering and it's a singles base, which I also usually would not um, choose for garments. But um, I figured I have um, a gleaner or whatever those things are called, uh, the kind of uh, razor for, <laughs> for your knitting. Um, I actually think this would be a product knit for me since I just, I really want that cardigan. I'm envisioning a cardigan with like lace panels that would be really feminine and yeah, I, I really want one of those cardigans. And the arms should not be too skinny. So, you know, it just has to be flattering so that I'm not like pulling them on and they the stitches would be stretched or anything like that um, which is one of my fears with this thin yarn uh, so I have been browsing Ravelry um, for weeks but um, especially this morning for this particular yarn and um, and I am torn between three patterns three cardigan patterns one Actually, <laughs> I don't really know how to pronounce it. Uh, I thought it was high to food or something, but uh, it's Japanese, so it's probably something like uh, Hitofude. 
um, although I do not speak Japanese, I only speak Chinese, so I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, but um, it's this really beautiful cardigan with lace panels and it flares out a little bit, so um, it doesn't have any buttons to close. So if you're just wearing it, it will kind of be like one of those waterfall cardigans. I'll insert a picture right here. Uh, so I really like this cardigan, but I don't know if I would really like the lace. Um, I'm not I'm not a huge lace knitter and the fact that it also continues along the arms and along the back, I'm not sure if I would like that. So one other contender is the Ivy Line cardigan, which is also a Japanese pattern. And um, it's very feminine. Uh, it has lace along the front and it has buttons, although I'm not a big fan of the button band since... Um, I'll first, I'll first in, insert a picture here. So if you can see, the button band is kind of narrow. So if, you know, if, if you make the cardigan a little bit too big, it's fine. But if you make it fitted, then it will kind of have these little gaps between the buttons and I really don't like that. Um, and uh, But I really like the look of the rest of the cardigan. Um, it has lace around the front and it's kind of bunched up here before the shoulders and then it, I think it has a plain back and also has plain stockinette uh, sleeves. Um, so I really like that. The one thing is it would take 1,000 meters and I, I have 960 meters. Um, so, and it has full length sleeves, so I just, I could, because um, I have short arms, I'll probably make the sleeves shorter anyway. And I think shortening the body of the shawl, <laughs> the shawl, <laughs> shortening the, the body of the cardigan would also be an option. So that might still be something, um, it might still be a contender because I really like it. Um, and then the third contender is the trellis cardigan, which uh, has been made over a hundred times. So that would be a great contender since it has been knit so many times. Well, of course, a hundred projects is not as much as some other um, famous patterns have. So, uh, but still, um, if it's made over 20 times, you can be sure um, at least some errors, if there are any errors, are taken out of, of the pattern. Um, and it's also by, uh, by a non-Japanese um, designer. So I feel that if I have any questions um, that I could contact the designer um, or that maybe the, the pattern is written to be more standard because I have some Japanese crochet patterns and the construction and the instructions are very different and I have not done any Japanese knitting patterns but I kind of fear that um, there is the same sort of culture gap um, in knitting patterns uh, in the instructions so I'm kind of hesitant to try out but um, at the same time, why not? It's a beautiful pattern. Uh, but as I was saying, the trellis pattern, I'll insert a picture here. As you can see, it's very, um, the lace detail is very subtle. It's just around uh, the yoke, I think you would call it, uh, just uh, the front. Um, and it also has a nice button band. Uh, the rest of the cardigan is plain and um, I think it would be a great wearable finish object. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of torn between those three. 
the first one, Hitofude, is, um, you know, yardage-wise would be perfect. Uh, it has been knit lots of times, but I'm not sure if I would like the lace and having the lace along the sleeves. Um, although I could probably alter it, but I don't know how it would look. Uh, the second one, I love it, but I'm not sure if I have enough yarn and I'm not sure if I would understand the directions. Uh, and the third one um, would probably be the safest choice. Uh, I haven't checked yardage-wise, actually. But if you have any other suggestions, maybe, for around uh, 960 meters or 1050 yards, of light fingering yarn, please let me know, because, yeah, I desperately want something to pin on this, like, this pattern is what I'm going to make. So, um, I don't have to cast it on immediately, I just want to know what I'm going to be knitting with it, because I fear that if I don't find a cardigan pattern, that I will just knit a shawl with it, and... I'm not really a shawl person, well, I do wear shawls, but I would wear cardigans much more. And since it was quite expensive yarn, I would like to get as much wear out of it as possible. So that's my cast on conundrum <laughs> for this week. Um, but as I've been saying multiple times, I would need to get some things off the needles. And um, I actually want to do a video where I talk about all of my whips and I show all of them, no matter how old they are. And um, I was inspired by the vlog episode by Alternate Universe, which is a yarn shop in Bristol in the UK, um, run by my friend Kim, who I met at the Molly Makes Hand Awards. Molly makes handmade awards, not the hand awards. What be what would be hand awards? <laughs> so I met her once, and um, she's lovely. She's she's so lovely. And um, uh, shortly after um, meeting her at the handmade awards, she opened a yarn shop, and you know that has always been a dream for me. Um, so I was so happy for her. And you might have heard of her uh, alternate universe shop before if you are watching the Stranded podcast by Amy, since uh, Amy from Stranded Dye Works was holding a trunk show there this weekend, or past weekend if you're watching this. Um, and it all seemed to go very well. Uh, and to... <laughs> get back to the beginning of why I was talking about this, Kim uh, made a vlog with her mom, which was hilarious, about all of their whips, uh, all of their works in progress, and um, there were so many, and um, <laughs> I feel that it would be great for me to do that, since um, you could all hold me accountable to those whips, and maybe, you know, maybe um, I would get enthusiastic about them again, um, I know I saw some of uh, Kim's old works in progress and I was like, those are so beautiful, you have to finish them right now. And um, so I think it would actually uh, give me some encouragement too if I were to show them. Um, but it is kind of, you know, I also think I would kind of feel ashamed for having so many whips. I know some of them haven't been touched in years. Yep. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and one podcast viewer from when I was doing the Dutch uh, uh, podcast actually asked me to, um, if I was willing to show my yarn stash, flasher stash. And um, I think that would actually be a step too far. <laughs> Since, you know, I have a lot of whips, but I have a humongous amount of yarn stash. It is, un it's just unbelievable. So I think I would rather do a video about all of my whips that will be shameful enough for me. <laughs> 
Um, yeah. And uh, I think it will be nice and refreshing to get all of them out again. And then whenever that happens, I will get to make a decision whether to frog or to finish. Yes. Uh, kind of anxious about it already. But um, we'll see when that happens. That was actually all I wanted to talk about uh, today. Um, I know it wasn't that much because I didn't do as much knitting. Well, I did a lot of knitting, but not as much as I can show you. And um, and I'm still preparing for the craft fair. And I'm really excited about that. Um, but I, I hope you still enjoyed this podcast. And thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you all again next week. Have a very crafty week. And see you all next time. Bye! So here are my rose hip. <laughs> oh my god. There's something in my eye. Maybe it's just my lashes sticking to each other. As I just did my makeup just for you guys. Because I. I like to not wear any makeup on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs>